Hey guys, welcome back. I've got the Cummins Thunderbird up on the hoist here. A lot of you probably have never seen the underneath of this, so soak it in here. Yeah, and we're getting to the Cummins part. Oily mess. Well, the reason I got this thing up on the hoist is when I originally built this, I didn't put these two bolts in down here. I didn't think I needed it. Apparently I did. Because, I don't know if you can make that out, but it cracked right here. I'm gonna pull this thing out, see if I can get that fixed. These transmissions are getting a little bit hard to come by. I have another one, but I don't want to put it in if I don't have to. So to get this thing out, you have to pull the gas tank so you can unbolt the drive shaft. Yeah. It's kind of inter interesting design they got here. I've had the fuel tank down a few times, though. It shouldn't come too bad. I've had some sending unit issues. Some wires fell off and whatnot. I think I got most of what I need. It's been a while since I pulled this down. This isn't something I do all the time. Got to take some of the screws out of these shields here. Got to take this bracket down. It's not heavy, but it just whacked me in the head. Just right. Oh, that put a kink in my neck. Oh. There's a crossover tube I gotta get off up here for a vent line. I gotta get the filler off. It's being stubborn. That'd probably be enough to get it out of here. There's some lines up here. I know they come off there, but I
Empty, still pretty full. Yeah, they'll clean up. Be nice if that thing wasn't in here at all. I'm not putting a fuel cell in the back. This is gonna go back on. 12 mil, 12 point. Seems like a lot of work just to get the drive shaft off on these things. But if you didn't have a fuel tank here, you could probably hide a couple turbos up in here. Independent rear suspension. 8.8 .8 track lock. Don't forget to grab the knob off. I'm gonna get the fluids out of this thing so make a little bit less of a mess. And you always gotta drop the plug in, right? Nice. Got a little stuff on the drain plug there. I can't remember if I changed the oil in the transmission since I've had it or not. It smells a little burnt. And it's kind of shiny. I didn't want to have to do this, but I do have a different transmission I could swap in that was rebuilt. I wanted to try to reuse this one though. Should be able to let this cross member down now. Actually take it out of there. I don't feel like taking the downpipe off if I don't have to. Might have to. That's not going. A lot of times there's a little plastic ring on these slave cylinders. You push it in with something and it releases the fingers in the fitting here. Some go easier than others.
Now I just got the six bolts to go. Normally you gotta pull the starter off when you're doing a Ford, but the Cummins, the starter is bolted to the, the adapter plate, so it doesn't have to come off. All right, let's see if this thing will come out of here nicely. Uh, I think I'm gonna end up pulling the shifter just to, just to make it a little bit easier here. I wasn't sure if it fit out that. I don't think it's gonna. Might be fun getting it back in. I went and pulled the sleeve out of there because that doesn't need to be in there for welding. And yeah, this is a coming, so it's oily all over. But since since I got this out of the car, now I can really see where that crack is. It starts up in here somewhere and goes past that bolt hole. So I'm going to try to get that welded up. I am not capable of doing this. Oily Cummins mess. Well, it's been a couple days. I got the tranny back. It's welded on the outside and the inside here. The crack didn't go too far up. And I think the reason for this is because the Thunderbird uses these bolts down here on the factory engine and I didn't have any bolts in there. So I put extra stress up on top and this transmission wasn't designed for that. Uh, this got broken transportation. I should have one of them laying around. But I'm just gonna go and get this thing slapped up in there and hopefully everything goes all right. Oh, and while I'm at it, this isn't very old, and it's shot. So I am looking for a different kind of boot to go over this. I have one on order. Hopefully it works, we'll see. So I decided to put a new output seal in here. This one wasn't leaking, but it is not in very nice shape. I have a new national seal. It's uh, 7692S. This is like $12. And this is what it's supposed to look like. It's supposed to have a boot. It's just a just a little extra, you know, dust boot. You can run one without the dust boot on there too. Just uh that's what it had, so it's going back on. You can see this one's kind of not there. I suppose I could have done this before I put it up in here, but I didn't think about it. It's out. Now there's a little hole in here. You want that to go down. And this has a little notch at the top. So put that up. That way if it gets any weepage in there, dust, whatever, it can work its way out. 
and take a little bit of the soil that's dripping, wipe it in the seal, just to help on reassembly of the drive shaft. I got my seal driver here. Well, two inch socket out of the set. Fits it pretty good there. Try that again. There we go. Normally I put in seals just by hammering them in, but I had a hard time getting this one to start without the socket. While I was torquing these down, I found that this bushing is like shot. See how much that moves? And the axles move and everything. I suppose that can contribute to a little bit of power hop and whatnot. I was just gonna tighten it up, but I think this top one's completely shot, so I'm gonna see what I can do there, see what my options are. Maybe, if nothing else, I can put this one up there. Sometime it'll have to be addressed. That's pretty smushed, pretty smushed. So I just went and made the top part out of Delrin. I know they probably aren't gonna like to play together, but it will get over it. It usually does. That's the last piece I had, so I didn't have much choice. Now for the test. Let's see if it moves. I don't see it moving. Good to go. I heard some good advice on a video. I don't remember where it was, but when you're changing fluids on a transmission or whatnot, take the fill plug out first. Because if you can't get the fill plug out and you drain it, how are you gonna fill it back up? Now, I have done it in the past where I have filled through the shifter, but kinda, you know, how do you know when it's full if you don't have the fill plug out either? Cause that's the fill level. So it is a good idea. Ah, back on there.
trying to prevent the mess. Come on now. It looks full. Ah, shoot a little bit more in there for good luck. Now it's good and full. He'll be fine. He'll get over it. Don't worry about it. Guys, I just want to be the first one to tell you, I done screwed up. Remember that seal on the transmission right there? Well, it doesn't do very good when it's rubbing the drive shaft. And for whatever reason, the cross member is all the way back in the bolt hole. I, I don't, I don't know. So that's just going to destroy itself. So I'm going to help it out by cutting it off there. So I could have just went and got the regular output shaft seal, tail extension seal, but I forgot this drive shaft is this close on here. My bad. That should work. Well, we got everything done under here. Just gotta put some tools away and let it down. Put fuel back in it. Let's see how much diesel I can get back in the tank without making a mess. Doing really good so far. Oh, shouldn't have stopped. I'm gonna stop there. That looks pretty black, nasty. Got a good three gallons in there, and if I went to stop part way to Brag, I would have hardly spilled any. Let's see if it fires up. Contact. Something isn't working. That's on. Why it no go? I drove it in here, but now it's like there's nothing. Ah, I remember what I forgot. The neutral clutch safety thing down below. I did not plug that in. Take two, let's try it again. Contact. <laughs> Sounds 
sounding pretty good. Just gotta clean it up. It's a little dirty from last time I used it. Cars get dirty, inside gets dirty. I've got a slip on replacement ABS dash cover thing coming for that. I had the seat redone in the back. That was all beat up from the sun. Got to vacuum it out and whatnot. This thing will be good to cruise around again. Well, guys, thanks for watching. Join me next time. Take care and God bless. You want to run them?